All right, good afternoon. Welcome. We are here in studio and we are talking sports with Val. Val joins me here again today as always and big day for you tomorrow, Val. It's your work anniversary. They sent me an email three years here with RTC and uh, it's been a pretty adventurous three years, obviously starting with the uh, you know pandemic kind of being in full swing and all the stuff we had to deal with with that. And it took me about a year and a half to see any of my coworkers' faces. Right. Yeah, because we were all wearing masks, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of different things. We've got to do uh, some some really cool events, you know, some regional basketball at Lapel. That was a pretty awesome event and have uh, definitely had a lot of fun, you know, following Pioneer Girls that year where they won three state championships and a lot of, uh, a lot of exciting stuff. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, culminating with what we saw at Frankfurt covering Caston and their two – wins in the softball semi-state to get to the state finals and on top of that all the all the other sporting events which we didn't broadcast but I was able to cover and write about on rtc4sports.com it's just been a blast yeah it's been a fun three years and we're we're looking for a lot more to, to come and just uh, appreciate you and uh, you know, appreciate RTC for allowing us to do this this is a you know a dream job for both of us I think yeah absolutely I mean the very few communities have what we have and do what we do, and it takes uh, uh, people above us who are really uh, who love sports as much as we do. I think. Yep. Yep. So. And appreciate the impact of sports and young people in the community. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a great place to work. I enjoy mm -hmm. it, and you know, I'm closing in on five years myself. So you know, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun, and we we really enjoy it. And, so today we're going to do some uh, 2023 fall sports previews, and we're going to break this up by school so you don't have a, you know overly long video. You can actually uh, choose your school and, and watch the, the previews. So I think that's what we're going to end up doing here. We kind of talked about it and decided on that's, that's the, how we're going to go. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, Argus and the, uh, the volleyball team. New coach for Argus this year. They went 1-27 and last year. Not a great record, but there was some energy around that program. Obviously, the tragedy mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, the passing of Emily Carr uh, in this, during the season. But, um, you know, there, there was some energy that was building around that volleyball program. It's been a long time coming. It's, you know, obviously a dominant soccer school. But uh, there, there seems to be some energy around that volleyball program. Right, Andrea Perez is the new head coach. Uh, this is She's very young. I mean, she just played at Argus, I think, within the last couple of years. I think mm -hmm. she's, what, in her early 20s? Yeah, yeah, very young. And uh, so, um, but again, she's the third coach in three years. I think the fourth coach in five years. So, uh, again, I think this, this program is can be helped by stability, but the good news so far is that they've got 21 girls out for volleyball. Wow. Compared, just to put that in comparison, we think of Argus as a soccer school, they've got 20 on the so girls' soccer team. So, Yeah, that's impressive for the volleyball. They actually have surpassed the the numbers. Right. Wow. It includes three seniors in Kendra Millizer, Lily McMillan, and Shelby Weiser. Um, there's one junior in Lexi Schenkel, so only four of the 21 are se juniors and seniors. They've got nine freshmen on the team, so... Uh, we'll have to see them in action and see kind of how many of those freshmen actually get on the varsity court. But the good news is with 21, they should have more than enough for a JV team. And again, when you've got a young team like that, they just need reps. Yeah, need reps, and and hopefully, uh, you know, coach will stay or stay around for a while because that's the the biggest thing. Like you said, stability. Right, especially because once you get to the fall of 2024, now you go into the Hoosier North, right? And that's a much tougher volleyball conference on the Hoosier Plains. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, uh, and we're going to talk about those teams here mm -hmm. in a different episode. But yeah, there's a lot of really good volleyball teams in that Hoosier North Conference, and so they're gonna they're gonna get a year here to to kind of prep for that in yeah. the Hoosier Plains, and then move over to the Hoosier North next year. So, mm -hmm. um, boys soccer, they have a a, a huge uh, year coming up this year. Uh, it's the 60th anniversary of the soccer program, of course, uh, Argus and Culver Academy were the first two teams mm -hmm. in the uh, state to form soccer programs, and obviously there's there's been a lot of success over the years. I think, is it four state championships for the Dragons? Uh, four, yeah. Three yeah. in the pre-IHSA days, and then yeah. the 2019 state championship under the IHSA, uh, IHSA auspices, if you will. Well, it's, it's really nice because 
those you know those pre IHSA championships were kind of overlooked for a long time, but I've been seeing more stuff uh, posted by people outside of Argus about you know who has the most state championships in soccer history, and Argus was posted uh, in that in that list as uh, having four state championships. So they're they're recognizing those mm-hmm. those titles, and you know one of them, uh, two of those teams were undefeated. So they they recognize them as yeah. as you know the only team. A couple of the uh, I think there was five different schools that had uh, soccer programs that went undefeated for the entire season, and so they recognize them in right. that. Argus assistant coach Spencer Vanderweel has started his own website, kind of dedicated to the history of not only Argus soccer but just soccer in the state. So yeah, and I think that's going to be great, uh, helpful for everybody. So is he going to do a John Harrell type thing for soccer, or uh, is it just more of a history thing? More like a history thing. I, 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 would, I would love it if he did a, right? a John Harrell type thing. Scheduling but, uh, and stuff? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, huh. I don't think he'd have any time to coach the team if he did that. Right, right. So we got some highlights here of uh, you know some of the action from last year as we talk about the boys uh, coming in this year. Right. The, the key figure on this team is Sean Richard. I mean, he, he is the last player on the team who has been a played in a state championship game or was there for a state championship game he was you know he was there when they lost to providence in the state championship game in 2020 and now he's kind of the senior leader on this team um but uh, you know they have got other leaders in jackson kindig and ethan Petz and ben zom uh both fishburn those guys mm-hmm. and so uh you know yeah they, they suffered some big you know big graduation losses aj mills will be missed uh, he was just such a big part of that team last year, but uh, um, they've got they've got a, a good number of players returning. Yeah, four and twenty-seven last year. You know, not the greatest uh, record for Coach Vanderweel, but two of those wins came in the sectional, and they actually you know pick up a, a sectional championship that win against North White. I mean, North White was heavily favored, and, right? You know, that was a that was a great game for for that team, and as they. Um, Actually, you can see some of those highlights here as they kind of matured throughout the year. But, you know, we talk about their schedule as mm-hmm. well. That uh, didn't help as far as the wins and losses go for them. But they just play such a tough schedule. But, you know, there were some really good um, uh, young players there. Obviously, the keeper. Um, Sawyer Crace. Sawyer Crace was just very impressive last year as a freshman. Right. And All right. That, I was so surprised to find out that, you know, Damon Binkley's on the coaching staff and Damon's in charge of the goalkeeper. I mean, right. He's one of the all-time great goal scorers, but his job is was working with Sawyer Crace and developing him as a goalkeeper. Right. It's not a surprise that he's on this coaching staff, but the fact that he was working with the defense yeah. as he was, like you said, a, a great offensive player. Right. But, uh, I, I asked Coach Todd Vanderweel, I said, how much was the? Well, the, do you think it will, be, it will be a positive carryover from last year? And he said, being able to win the sectional last year for the struggles of our regular season definitely has improved our confidence. It has shown these guys that hard work and learning, hard work and leaning and trusting each other does pay off, and we have really seen a great work effort, work effort from this group so far this fall. Mm-hmm. So I think that so that, yeah, that's a good sign. And then you know um, he talks about the defense being the strength at this point, and you know Jared Frick was a kid who I don't think we talked a whole lot about him last year, but he really came on at the end of last year. And you put him in back there with Keegan Stanley and Corbin Rex and Kyle Penn, and you've got a really solid defense in front of Sawyer Crace. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I think in a lot of ways it's you know being able to finish, being able to put the ball in the net. Um, you know, Todd Vanderweel said we have guys that can finish, but we're working to build confidence in them so that they will finish. Yeah, and uh, we feel that that's something they can improve so f- as the season goes on. And of course, the other thing that um, the issue that they're I don't know, issue, but of course, the, is that uh, they had to replace Elmer Roke. Mm-hmm. And of course, Elmer has moved on; he's the head coach of West Noble now. So, um, uh, Andy Petz has been added to the coaching staff, and of course, he's got two sons on the team. Mm-hmm. So he'll join um, that coaching staff. And um, Todd said, um, you know, with Joe Kindig and Spencer and Damon Binkley, that um, you know he, he's been a great help so far. So. Yeah, and Andy has a ton of uh, soccer coaching experience, mm-hmm. you know, at the lower levels all, all around uh, Argus. So he's going to be a great addition uh, to that uh, coaching staff. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, uh, finishing at the net—that's going to be uh, an issue. Yeah, and I think that's probably 
part of the progression is you have a younger team. I think that's probably the last thing that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have a solid defense, you're going to be in games. Mm -hmm. I, I think you can uh, you can stay in games with a good defense and uh, you know just keep putting pressure on the the other team on the uh, offensive end and and you you maybe get one or two of those and and then get a few wins. So I think this team will uh, will have a good progression. Obviously, you know the coaching staff definitely has the experience mm -hmm. to uh, to bring them along. So. Right. And by the way, North White is ranked number 18 in the <laughs> preseason poll this year. Right, right. And they'll, again, have to come to Argus, though, for a sectional. Right. And they're, they're not going to be happy about the way things ended last year, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was a pretty uh, healthy uh, advantage. Or, uh, you know, they were, um, you know, favored in that game. And so that was what I would consider a pretty big upset for you know, North White to, you know, for Argus to get that win. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to be looking forward to uh, year 60 of Argus boys soccer here this season. And uh, on the other side, the, the girls team, um, you know, 9 7 and 3 last year, they had a, a little bit of a struggle at times, but um, they did get that sectional win, uh, made it all the way to the regional championship, lost 1-0 uh, to Andre, and in that championship game, um, a lot of graduations, though. Yeah. A lot of really good girls graduated from that team. Boy, when you talk about, you know, um, Don Pinkley, Allen, and there is Hines. Hines shoots, and the rebound, it goes in. Bella Stoltz, great save by Jimenez on the first shot. That was a great save. A really good Bremen team just battled the whole way. Mm -hmm. Young, Having said that, young Ar Bremen team, right. yeah, yeah, they're going to be tough. Right. I mean, Argus, you know, they they dominate possession, but um, but it, it took what uh, second overtime before Argus scored the game-winning goal. And of course, the key figure on this team is um, Lily Hines, who is uh, what I think she's won the RTC Player of the Year award every year we've given it out. Yeah, yeah, she's our only winner three in a row. Mm -hmm. And she's one of the seniors on this team, along with Carly Rex, Micah Heckman, Laney Masters, and Alana Horvath. So. Uh, So they will be um, uh, the key f uh, members of this team. But as we said, they've got 29 of the 20 are freshmen. Mm -hmm. When you talk about Eliana Brown, Avery Hines, Haley Schaefer, Leah Pizzuto, Ivis, Ivy Stackhouse, Samantha Umbaugh, um, Hannah Willis, ha Hazel Hanselman, and Kaylin Adams. So uh, I would imagine somebody from that group is going to have to emerge. I mean, another key player they lost was Caden Boffman. Mm -hmm. She, you know, they lost her to graduation as well, and she was key to that back row and in that midfield. So, um, but again, Coach Joe Stone's teams have been so consistently good for a long time. Um, you'd have to think they're going to be favored, especially hosting the sectional. Yeah, I mean, you know, Laville, but again, it won't be easy. Bremen and Laville and Trinity Greenlawn will all be there and have all proven to have nice programs but I think they're you know Argus's strength and physicality kind of won out last year as well over those younger teams so we'll see if that holds through again holds true again this year yeah Trinity obviously is going to be uh hungry you know they they probably felt like they could have won you know that sectional and obviously didn't get past Argus and you know Bremen uh boy they have a they have a nice young squad coming back yeah. so you know the path is not going to be easy for the dragons they do uh you know sectional does go through uh eugene snyder field again for them so that's that's a good thing a home pitch uh sectional matchup with uh for the dragons but uh yeah they're gonna have a lot of new faces and new places and right uh, you know they're gonna have a lot of big shoes to fill you know how long has it been since there's not been a dunlap on the pitch for the argus girls soccer 10 years better yeah something like that yeah, yeah. so you know that's that's going to be a little bit odd not seeing a, a dunlap out there on the field and um you know just a 
kind of a little bit of a rebuilding year here for Coach Stone, um, but uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to call it a rebuilding year, especially when you have yeah. uh, you know somebody like Lily Hines to lead the way. And here was Lily's big penalty kick against Laville. She said she always goes right, and on that one she went left and scored the game-winning goal in the sectional final. And they tacked on that second one and one, what two to nothing. So it's and, then a, they, and then they won the you know they won the regional semifinal, you know, pretty handily. And but Andrean's a strong team too. But I mean, this is a team that kind of thinks big. And I'll be curious to see, uh, you know, if, if they were to run into Andrean again, how they would fa fa factor. But right now, I think it's you know I haven't talked to Coach Joe Stone, but I would imagine it's. I'm very curious to see how many of these nine freshmen are going to be able to acclimate themselves to the varsity game right away. Yeah. Well, with only with only 20, I'm guessing they're going to have to have a few of them that uh, do see a little pitch time. So right. Now, Ava Stackhouse, who's run cross-country in the past, and I don't know if she's still running cross-country this year, but she's also listed on the soccer roster as a goalkeeper. Okay. Now, they have a Lydia lead already. Right. So I don't know if uh, they'll both be in playing. I mean, I don't know if... If either one might see some time outside of goalkeeper, or or how that might work, but yeah. Ava Stackhouse is one of the better athletes in the school. I uh, I'll be curious to see how she's used. Yeah, and I thought Lydia, you know, in her first year in the varsity uh, keeper box, mm -hmm. uh, I thought she did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she had some some really good stuff there in that sectional. I thought she she played really well, and and you could tell. Uh, from early in the season until the sectional, you know, there was a lot of growth, right? In in what she was able to do there in the in the box. Yeah, I still think this is a team that relies on possession, and so again, you lose a Bailey Binkley to graduation. You, um, it, uh, they were just able to, and Caden Bob, and they were just able to possess the ball so well. Let's see how they they do that because that's really been the characteristic of a Joe Stone coached Argus girls soccer team. Yep. Yep. Uh, you mentioned the cross country team. I I don't know a whole lot about what their cross country team is going to look like, but that would be the other sport that they have going on in the fall. Any, any insights into that? Well, um, Coach Bob Lyon is back, and of course his daughter uh, Savannah is one of the key uh, runners on the team, along with Lexi Gibson and Ava Stackhouse. Those were the three girls they had last year. They did not, they did not have a boys cross country team, so uh, that's what we know about them. And of course they're headed to the Manchester sectional again. So uh, again it. In a lot of ways, it's not going to uh, the the change in the state tournament format. I don't. And we're going to be kind of as we talk about cross country. We're going to talk about how the change in the state tournament format is affecting each of our area schools. And I would say with Argus, it's not going to affect it too much, if only because I think smaller schools are going to have to concentrate more on getting individuals through. Well, if you have only three girls anyway, it's not going to yeah. uh, matter too. Much. But I mean, this program has made quite a quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of a jump. I mean, all three of those girls are very competitive runners, very strong runners. They just don't have a full team yet. Yeah. Yep. But that's another that cross country will benefit moving to the Hoosier North in 2024 because I think it'll I think it'll um, promote the sport even more and to put together a full team. I don't think I don't know if the Hoosier Plains is it's as big a deal. Mhm. Mm yeah, there's there's some schools in there that probably have uh, very similar type situations or even lower numbers than what they do at Argus as mm -hmm. far as the running goes. And um, yeah, there's there's some schools in the in the Hoosier North that uh, definitely take uh, the running very seriously. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see how that transition goes. So, all right, I think that's it. Uh, any other uh, tidbits on Argus Fall Sports before we uh, end this one? I think that's that's all we have uh, for now. Again, it, it's so much is about uh, taking that next step toward the fall of 2024 and the move to the Hoosier North. All right. Well, we'll be uh, keeping an eye on the Dragons and, and things that are going on up in Argus and uh, keeping you apprised weekly as we uh, continue our uh, talk in sports. Uh, we're going to call it good here for Argus, and uh, we'll move on to our next school here in our next segment.